insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights in Entertainment. This is episode 101, Cruising Back to Normal. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my generous and giving co-host, Michelle Whalen. Aww. And why are you generous and giving today, sweetie? I don't know. Because you got up at 6 o'clock oh. in the morning to take my car for inspection today. I didn't get up at... Well, I did get up, but I didn't actually... Right. All right, we'll go 6.30, you know. Yes. But yeah. Because in order to get the <laughs> tight window that you have with the MVC here in New Jersey to get your car inspected on the weekends, uh, I would never wind up successfully getting it done because I wouldn't get up till 10 o'clock. And by the time I get there and sit in the <laughs> line for two hours, they'd close. Right. You'd be done. And what's funny is uh, I had mentioned it to a, a friend of mine and they were like, oh, was it a new car? I was like, no, we, we have to get it inspected. They're from Ohio. They don't do car inspection. So wow. it was just like, what do you do? <laughs> so who who would have thought something as mundane as, hey, we have to go get our car inspected. Well, and you would, would think have... from Ohio with all the weather that they get that it would be even more important yeah. to get it inspected. No, it seemed and, – and then they did a Google search and it seemed there's only like 17 states or something wow. in the United States that actually do – car inspection so there's your trivia for well, today well and the one thing we're fortunate <laughs> for here in jersey is that our car inspections are actually included in our registration fees so it doesn't right. cost us anything right so you can actually go to free locations right. you you can go you can to take private. it to a local mechanic and right and they'll and, and pay it. but yeah here we are fortunate you anyway don't that's pay. why you are generous in giving for of your time Aww. for me today so i appreciate it there no problem so that's not what we're talking about today. No, though. it wasn't. <laughs> what we're talking about today is entertainment. Uh, in our Disney Detective, we're going to talk about Walt Disney Imagineering <clears throat> and ABC teaming up for a new interactive series, as well as some changes coming to Disney stores with their change in commerce policies, I mm. guess we could say. Yeah. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, We'll talk about how Disney will make guests believe they're staying in a Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, which is their new hotel that they'll be opening up mm -hmm. uh, next year, year after, something like that. I think the end of the year, possibly. There's no date yet, so we'll, right. yeah. And then we'll talk about how Star Wars can finally have a Marvel-like shared universe, which I got news for folks. They had it before you had a Marvel Cinematic Universe, if you talked about the expanded universe, but blah, blah, blah. we're not going to get into that. Nope. In our entertainment news, HBO is planning a documentary on Pee Wee Herman himself, actor Paul Rubens. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about San Diego Comic Con not quite coming into normal yet, but they're going to give us kind of a hybrid solution that will hopefully get us back into some sense of normalcy. And then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week. Are we ready to get started? Sure, let's do it. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So Walt Disney Imagineering and ABC are teaming up for a new interactive series called Imagine from Home. Um, it's uh, they're collaborating um, on this interactive video series, which is actually streaming online. Um, and in each episode, Disney Imagineers will actually share their skills and passion by showing you step by step instructions to draw or craft something inspired by the Disney parks using materials that you probably have around your home. So the website 
uh, for all of these episodes is actually imaginefromhome.com. And there are five episodes that they have. Um, it doesn't look like they're going to produce any more. So it's probably, you know, these are them. Um, and for each episode, they list the level of difficulty from beginner to advanced, as well as the supplies that you're going to need for each project. Uh, so the different projects are draw your castle. Then they have build your R2 droid, um, draw your big thunder mountain, uh, make your castle nightlight. And then the final one is make your uh, small world animated scene. So it's cute. It's, you know, in the, uh, you know, in the age of the, the DIY, DIY, and, you know, everybody trying to find crafts, you know, to, to do, you know, with kids or for themselves. This was a cute little uh, series that, that Disney's doing, you know, because they're all inspired by things from from the different parks. So kind of cute. Well, that, that is kind of cute. And it, it kind of goes along the lines of what Disney's been doing through this mm -hmm. whole last year where they're yeah. giving you recipes and, right, right. you know, insider little tours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're kind of keeping that interest going when you can't right, get when back you can't. to the park. Yeah, so it was cute. So, like, you know, for the drawing ones, it, it basically, you need paper, you need, you know, things to color. But then for, like, the nightlight, um, you need a box, and you need some sort of light source, so, like, a battery-operated, um, you know, Christmas lights or something. And then, you know, for the, the animated scene, you, you know, uh, you need, like, an X-Acto knife, and you need... Um, uh, a glue gun. So, you know, some are a little bit more, you know, advanced than just, you know, uh, you know, paper and, and, and a pencil. So that's cute. Well, yeah. and the, the other neat thing is it's one of those things where it might be that spark to mm -hmm. spark a, a, a kid to want to go down that path themselves and start Absolutely. doing their own stuff and eventually become an imaginator themselves. Yeah, sure could. Very cool. So let's talk about Disney stores and what's happening with them. Yeah, so Disney had made an announcement the other week that they would be closing 20% of its brick-and-mortar Disney store locations before the end of the year as part of a bigger focus to focus on the e-commerce business. Um, so now, actually, if you go to the DisneyStore.com's website and you go to the store locator and you look for – like, they don't list – um, the stores that are closing, you actually have to go and, and look for a cer certain location. It actually says that these uh, locations would be closing on or before March 23rd. So a lot sooner than the one article uh, that came out uh, talked about. Um, so at least 60 of the North American locations will close, the company had said, citing that changes in consumer behaviors and a desire to link its online shopping experience to its Disney Parks app and social media platforms. There are about 300 Disney stores worldwide. Um, Stephanie Young, who is the president of Consumer Products, had said, while consumer behavior has shifted towards online shopping, the global pandemic has changed what consumers expect from a retailer. Um, so obviously, everybody has seen this um you know across the board um that brick and mortar stores you know unless it's a grocery store um you know they're really the only ones that are, are kind of thriving um during all of this because also they were the ones that weren't closing uh that weren't closed for a while where you had you know a lot of other retail stores that were closed and you know some are, are finally starting to to open or have been open but you know limited capacity um and whatnot so obviously disney was feeling it um as well so that was kind of uh part of the reason behind it um so it's going to be closing you know some of their stores um now um so they have uh they had actually started putting um disney had partnered with target uh back in 2019 where they had like miniature uh, Disney stores located within certain targets. Um, so as of right now, those don't seem to be affected by it. Uh, the article also talked about um, the Disney outlet stores that are, you know, open throughout, that those are not affected um, either. So it just happens to be the Disney the actual Disney stores. Um, in our area, it looked like uh, Freehold, which 
isn't that close to to here um, is, is one of the stores that will be closing. And that was like the original Disney store that was, you know, where I grew close to where I grew up. Uh, so that was my original uh, Disney store. Uh, so that's kind of, uh, you know, sad to see. And then in some areas where there might have only been, you know, one Disney store in a certain state. Now that state's not even going to have a Disney store. But the idea from what they were talking about is that they're going to revamp uh, the website and actually do more, um, you know, not just toys on the website, but do more um, adult clothing and collectibles and, and kind of what the Disney stores originally had back when they first opened. They had a, a much bigger variety of items that they offered and then they kind of revamped it and it went more towards the kids aspect of things so it was harder to get those collectible items unless you actually went down to Disney where they you know where they would have it there so now it seems like they're going to try and bring back you know a lot of that so well and this also comes on the heels of Disney having done uh, a couple of year project of doing updates to their stores mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they just not only did they update the Deptford store near us, they completely moved it in the, into a new store area in a much larger location right. as well. And yeah, they, so. they had done the update to <coughs> Cherry Hill as mm -hmm. well to make it a much more interactive style right. store. Right. I'm curious if the stores that they're closing are ones they haven't actually gotten yeah, around maybe, to updating. Yeah, I don't yet. know because I can't remember the last time we were up in Freehold. You yeah. know, but we've, you know, in in our, our travels, we've happened upon a lot more Disney outlet stores than there ever were, you know, before. And, you know, the, the last, <clears throat> excuse me, the last two that we, you know, went to, they had lines to, yeah. to get in. Now, yeah. granted, that it was, was because of restrictions on restrictions, access. but it was amazing, you know, where there were other stores in the outlet mall that didn't have a line. Disney was one of the only ones, but even, um, you know, the, well, the one that's down in Orlando, we haven't obviously been there, um, in ages, but they actually started doing a line as, as a little, well. A little over a year. It's not ages. Well, it feels like ages because we were down there not this past Christmas. It was 2019. Christmas that was a long time ago. Yeah, <clears throat> we when, went through when, twice. When you go, <laughs> when you go to Disney two or three times a year, I could see going that long being ages. Yeah. Well, it it just seems like ages since we've actually been anywhere. Just you know. Now they did have a total number of stores that they're closing. Did they talk about how many? jobs this is going to cost no they didn't mention how many how many jobs would be affected by it yeah, yeah you figure what those numbers are yeah you figure each store maybe has 20 you know did they, wanna... did they discuss at all what the financial impact was that caused the decision to close the stores no no yeah disney's usually plays that pretty tight to the vest mm -hmm. there yeah so. Well, unfortunate, especially some of the long-time ones that, uh, yeah. like Freehold, that have been there for years. Yeah, yeah. So that was all we had for our Disney detective. Mm -hmm. We'll be back after a quick break with our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com.
go for tales <laughs> from the edge of the galaxy. Uh, so this article came from attractionsmagazine.com, and it um, basically is, is giving a, an overview of how Disney will make guests feel and believe that they are staying in a Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. So they have a, a whole bunch of uh, different aerial uh pictures, uh, satellite pictures um, of the area, and they kind of, um, you know, took the artist renderings that have come out and kind of overlap to try and figure out, um, you know, how it how it's all going to work, um, you know, and in some of the pictures, um, you can see that they've started to um, plant some trees and in, in the tree line and stuff. And, and what's kind of important about that. And, you know, if, if you have been to Disney, you know that they use trees to hide things and camouflage things and, um, you know, hide things, you know, out of sight from, uh, you know, the, the guest, uh, you know, that goes there to kind of help with the, illusion of everything um so what they were were talking about in um in the article is how um it kind of looks like when you get to the hotel it's going to be a one-way uh path that you have to follow with your car and that basically you're going to get to a certain area and it's going to be valet parking so you're going to um you know hand over your your car they're going to unload um your vehicle and Basically, you have to kind of treat it as you're going on a cruise. Um, you know, if you go on a cruise, you never get your, you know, you don't leave the cruise ship uh, to go other places. You're on the ship. That's where you stay for however long the journey is. And this is going to be the same thing. So you're going to, um, you know, check in. They're going to park your car, uh, unload it, and then you don't see your car for the two days that that you're there. Um, so then they show the rest of the buildings, how um, then, you know, you kind of go through the one area and they're going to transport you off world. Um, so then you're on, you know, you ha you're going to go through some sort of motion simulator to, to get to the star cruiser. And then they were also showing how they're starting to build the area um, that's in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge of where you're going to, how you're going to get from the hotel to the park. So there'll be a specific, uh, a special entrance just for the resort guests. So obviously the idea is that they'll have a bunch of different activities going on at the resort, um, like uh, lightsaber battling. Uh, you'll be able to uh, take uh, tours of the... Um, th um, the um why can't i think of the, the word i just totally blanked out um you know so they'll have the restaurant they'll have a bar they'll do have character meet and greets you'll be able to uh check out the bridge of the ship and uh maybe depending on what time you're there there might be a battle going on that you kind of help with um and then obviously also being able to to go to the park um so no date as of right now when it's supposed to open i think it's supposed to be sometime the end of this year but again nothing um ha has come out but the idea is if this kind of takes off could they do other themed you know hotels you know something like this takes off that's that's funny i see where you went there <laughs> I wasn't even trying. Thanks. Um, so, you know, obviously we know that they already have themed rooms. You know, they have the Pirates of the Caribbean room. Um, they had always talked about doing a Haunted Mansion themed room and that never came to be. But how cool would it be if they did a Haunted Mansion hotel or even a Marvel themed you know, hotel now that they're incorporating, you know, Marvel into uh, the parks. So cool little, you know, hints and teasers, you know, as, as it's getting, you know, closer and closer. So. So I have to say, in looking at some of the shots that we have, mm -hmm. some of the overhead shots, this does not look particularly large. In no. Fact, it looks 
very small compared to a typical Disney resort. Well, and that's the thing, too, is most of the Disney resorts are multiple buildings. Th- that's my point, right. is that <clears throat> this literally looks like one building. The the shape and size looks like it's a single building from, like, Pop Century. Mm-hmm. And that's about the capacity. So it looks right. like from this shot that we're looking at here, mm-hmm. um, it looks like it's, what, three floors, four floors maybe? Yeah, and it looks I'm like guessing three. Those are, are the rooms in the back in the right. narrow area. Mm-hmm. The area in the front is going to be what your bridge is and your restaurant and everything else right, is going right. to be. So literally almost a third of the building that you have there is services. It's not even mm-hmm. the rooms themselves. Right. And from what you know, you've seen, the rooms aren't particularly large either. Right. You know, it's supposed to give you that feel of being on – a cruise. Have they announced yeah. what the capacity of the resort is at this no, point? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's been anything and about it yet. As you would expect, it looks like everything is an indoor right. attraction because there's no pool areas. There's nothing outside. Right, because the idea is you're supposed – and that's the other thing too is I don't know if they're going to have a pool because it's Florida – and usually when you go to Florida, you want to go swimming. Right. So I, I don't know. I They haven't really given you much of, you know, maybe in Star Wars, you don't swim. I, I don't know. Well, they swam on Camino, right? It was a water world, so you kind of have sure. to swim. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so I don't so, know. So it legit shaping up. Right. Not, not, no pun intended, but it's shaping up to be a very different Absolutely. resort experience than what Disney typically offers. Right, and I could totally see the person that would normally go for, you know, a five-day trip, seven-day trip. This would be part of their vacation, and then right. they'd stay. Like we talked before. Like, it was right. this, the sea and land, you know, right. the cruise and, and mm-hmm. theme park attraction right. type thing. Right, What we had said, oh, how are they going to keep you from leaving Right. You know, it sounds like they. Well, you can't get to your car now, so right, you're not. Gonna they get... valet park your car someplace that you can't get right. to it. Right, and you know, and I guess that's what they're trying to convey is because if you look at the land, there's literally no parking yeah. area in the air in yeah. the immediate vicinity. Yeah, so they're probably trying to you know to convey to people that make this reservation. Think of it as you're going on a cruise, so don't plan to make dinner reservations right. someplace else. Everything will be, you know, and I wonder if they're going to do that kind of like when you go on a cruise where, you know, you, you do your rotation, you know, certain well, how many restaurants. restaurants are they doing? I know I they're doing know. one, but right. it's not big enough to really do more than that. I don't know. I don't know. And that's the thing is, you know, maybe it's kind of where uh, maybe there's multiple seatings, you know, like there's a, you know, a five o'clock, a six o'clock and a seven o'clock right. seating for dinner. And-, and it's just the one building that we see in the shot here, right? It's There isn't like three of these spread around the campus. No, not that I know of. As far as I know, it's just the one. Seems like very limited capacity. Did they release pricing yet? Nope, nothing yet. That's you know I'm checking. I know, I know. <laughs> Just to see. <laughs> that will probably be our triumphant return to Disney is when that opens and we can do that. Yeah, I could see that. So, interesting. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about how Star Wars is giving us a Marvel-like shared universe. So from denofthegeek.com, uh, this article basically was talking about how Star Wars can kind of you know, finally have that Marvel like shared universe, even though, you know, you had said they've already kind of had that. Um, but obviously last December, Disney had announced that there were going to be seven new star Wars films and, and TV projects and, you know, giving us a look at, you know, what the next few years were going to be looking like, um, not only for Disney plus, but also in the theaters as well. Um, so, uh, rogue squadron, um, is going to be the movie that's going to be directed by uh, Patty Jenkins. And that was kind of, you know, the big event uh, that was, had been announced. Um, But obviously they have all these, um, you know, small screen events as well. So we have uh, the Lando Calrissian um, show that they've been talking about. 
as well as Ahsoka Tana, um, you know, coming in and, you know, what this article was basically talking about is that now with bringing in all these different things, they're kind of doing what the MCU has done is that even though you have all these different movies and all these different characters, there's little teases in one that help to lead you, um, you know, to the other. And, um, you know, so that now that, you know, even though you had, you know, the, the original trilogy and the original trilogy and the prequels and the sequels, um, it was all still the same storyline, you know, the, the, um, the, the Skywalker saga, um, where here that when you had, um, the, um, uh, the Mandalorian season two, now you got to see some of these other characters that now they're going to bring out, um, into other things as well as, you know, the little teaser that you had for the book of Boba Fett. So now, uh, they're they're teasing a little bit of one to give you you know a taste of something coming forward so the idea was kind of how like with WandaVision that's setting us up you know a little bit for Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel too and that yes in the books and the expanded universe they did that for Star Wars but the films didn't do that so maybe that's what you know the article is really well, trying the to. The films didn't do it because the films were a serialized version of a single story. Right. So everything in the films were interrelated. Right. They didn't have, you know, because you figure you had uh, the offshoot. You had the droid mm -hmm. uh, animated series. Right. You had the uh, ebook. Um, Series. Village of the Damned Evil or something. <laughs> I forget what it was called. But oh, wow, uh, <laughs> really? I didn't think it was that that scary. <laughs> um Yeah, Village of the Damned Ewoks. Um Oh but, damn Ewoks. <laughs> they, but they were all tied into the original. Right. So you had that before. So for them to pretend like they're doing something extraordinary here, Star Wars was the first um real genre that gave you that interconnected universe every novel that came out was part of a bigger universe the novels from the expanded universe explored all the stuff that disney's pretending is new you know they they pitched uh the mandalorian as oh you know the universe isn't just about skywalker we're going to show you what the fringe is doing and stuff like that that's all stuff that was done in the novels and the comics to begin with. So for Disney to pretend that they're in inventing that is ridiculous. For Disney to pretend that they're giving you this interconnected universe, it was already there, you know. And I can't even give Lucas credit for it because it wasn't Lucas that did it. Right, Lucas right. basically just sat back and said, okay. This is what I did. Do whatever do you whatever, want. Right. Just make sure I get my royalties. As long as he got his check, he basically let you do pretty much anything that kind of fit into the universe. The problem that you ran into with that was that you wound up getting some inconsistencies, inconsistencies in canon mm -hmm. um, that they always seem to struggle with. Um, but what what Disney gave us with the Marvel Cinematic Universe is built on what you got from the comics and the books from Star Wars, and it was built on what you got from the original comic series that Marvel did. The, Disney's not doing something unique and right. original here. Right. So, I, you know, let's let's make sure that we get that straight. Right. Um, the fact that they're putting everyone and their brother apparently gets a TV show with Disney now. Right. Um, if you happen to be in a movie. I mean, I'm waiting for, you know, Skippy the Jedi droid that, that showed up in Mandalorian to get his own series now. <laughs> now, that would be funny. It, it's... That's the point that we're at now. Right. And I know that's where the, the genre. Right. And I know that that that's always been your thing is that there's going to be too much saturation of it. And that's where the problem always lied back in the day when they started doing too much. So is this going to be too much? And like you've said before, does everybody need a backstory? Do we need to know what happened? Right. You know, exactly. But obviously, I didn't need to hear fifty times in one movie that Han Solo wanted to be a pilot. I didn't. 
I didn't need them to cram 20 years of Han Solo's life into a three day version of a story. Mm -hmm. They did a terrible job with it. Right. You know, they did a very good job with um, Rogue One. Right. But like you're batting 500 at this point here. Mm. You know, it's hit and miss. And, and unfortunately with Star Wars, with with my Star Wars and everyone else who's a Star Wars fan feels the same way, you need a better batting average than, than 50%. Right. You need to do a better job. And we've got, what, four new Star Wars shows that are coming out for no apparent reason whatsoever. You know, Cassian Andor is getting a show. We know how his story ends. We don't need to see the backstory of how he got to Rogue One. Yeah, I understand. You know, Rogue One makes sense. It was a great right, novel absolutely. series. I'd love to see them incorporate some of the personalities from the novels. And, and that's what I wouldn't mind seeing is something else like a Rogue One where it's you know, a one-off where maybe there's one character that kind of, you know, like you had the Darth Vader scene and you had, you know, the end with, you know, Princess Leia right. because it was setting up. So I could see them doing another But you see, one-off. Disney needs to do this because Disney painted themselves into a corner with the True. trilogy, the, right. the, the sequel trilogy, because right. they set it so far in advance, they changed the complete dynamic by throwing because the time period from return of the jedi until force awakens had already been established in the expanded universe so there was an expectation disney threw all of that right out. they threw it out so all right. of the supporting history that you had in the novels and comics and video games up until that point became invalidated right so now they stick a stake in the ground 35 years in the future that's completely different than anybody, although strikingly similar to what we had. We just changed the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Right. And you have no history of how you get there. Mm -hmm. So you go from the Empire to the First Order. You go from the Rebellion to the Republic to the Resistance. But you have no explanation as right, to how you get how there. how it happened that way. So right, they painted well. themselves into the corner where they have to now do this. Mm -hmm. And they tried doing it initially through novels where... 3% roughly of the people who watch the movies read the novels. So nobody got the backstories. Right. So now you're going to come out with 12 different TV series. To help fill that gap. That has to, to help fill it. Right. Because we've yeah. got a little bit of that from The Mandalorian, but literally Still just not a morsel right. in the second season. No, I get it. So now you're two seasons in, you basically get – a dribble of information to fill that in. And then you've got four more series. Well, they better start filling in these gaps and giving people some backstory instead of going off in a completely different direction. Right. So what they're doing is not unique and they have to do it because of the way they decided to relaunch the franchise under their own terms. So it's their own fault that they have to do this. It's not some benefit to the fans. That's my Disney rant for today. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> I'm done. And that is all we have for tales for <laughs> bitching from the dark side here. <laughs> hey, we have cookies. <laughs> let's uh, let's take a break. I'll bring my blood pressure back down a little bit, and then we'll talk about some entertainment news. <laughs> Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcasts.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com.
dum 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 dum. Go for entertainment news. <laughs> Uh, so from Deadline.com, uh, it seems that HBO is planning a documentary on actor Paul Rubens. So HBO is no stranger to shining a light on some of Hollywood's most fascinating people. And now it's setting its sights on spotlighting the person who created one of the most beloved characters. Uh, sources tell Deadline that HBO Documentary Films is in production on a two-part documentary about the life of Paul Rubens, who is the man behind Pee Wee Herman. Um, he had actually said, I've been working with HBO since they were called Home Box Office, Paul Rubin uh, had said. He said, I'm honored and excited to continue my long history there. I love HBO, but I'm not going to marry them. I thought that was funny. Um, so um, the um, the producer had said uh, that he was thrilled to partner with HBO on Paul's incredible life story. He's a once in a generation talent whose brilliance created an indelible pop culture phenomenon. Audiences uh, will be inspired and entertained by Paul's creativity, resilience and determination as they get to know the person behind the iconic character. Um, he had actually started as an improvisational comedian and stage actor, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, in, with the comedy troupe, uh, The Groundlings in the 1970s. Uh, and his big break came when he introduced the world to Pee Wee Herman in 1982 in a comedy show in Los Angeles. Uh, the show would end up selling out for five straight months and then HBO decided to produce a, uh, special around one of the performances. Um, and then over the next decade, Rubens would appear as the Herman character in two movies, which would be Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which was in 1985 and was directed by Tim Burton and then Big Top Pee Wee in 1988. Uh, Rubens and the character hit their true peak when CBS actually gave them a Saturday morning kids show, uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Now, what's kind of funny is if you ever watch the original um, HBO uh, show of his show. It was not a kid show at all. So it was kind of funny uh, for fans that had seen his original show. And then all of a sudden he, he was able to turn it into the kid show. Um, and that ran uh, for four years on CBS. Um, and um, uh, the, one of the other uh, producers of the uh, documentary, it said, we all know Pee Wee Herman and it's time for the world to actually meet Paul Rubens. Uh, sources say that the documentary is expected to focus not only on the Herman years, but also include uh, Rubens post Pee Wee decades, uh, where he put the bow tie away to focus uh, on acting projects that included um, Ben Stiller's Mystery Men, Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, uh, and Blow, where he uh, starred opposite uh, Johnny Depp. Uh, Rubens did eventually bring back the Herman character um, in 2016 in the Netflix movie Pee-wee's Big Holiday, which had Rubens fan Judd Apatow uh, producing. Um, so given how private Rubens has been over the years, this will mark the first film that will actually document his life. And given his early ties that he has with HBO, it makes sense that they'd be the one to tell his story. Very interesting. Now, is this going to be a standalone or is this going to be part of a, a, a documentary series that HBO is putting together? It's just a two-part series that they're doing. And, and HBO does these various documentary series. Some of them are, are a couple of episodes. Some are just one episode. So this will actually be a, a two-part one. So, were you, a, were you a Pee Wee fan? Oh, absolutely. The movies, the TV show, or both? All of it. You know, I had... I had probably I probably saw the HBO special when I was probably too young to have seen the HBO special. That was the thing. My parents never really uh, put those parental controls on, on the TV. So I became a fan. So, you know, watching it, I didn't get half of the jokes. You know, I was a little too young. So then when the movies came out big fan of the movies and then you know when the the kids show came out of course i was older but you know it was it was just so cool i had to watch it you know yeah. anyway so yeah i was always a big fan i don't think i ever saw the 
the Netflix special. I don't know if I did. I don't remember. We'll have I don't, to look it up. Now. Yeah, yeah. So I'll have but to. But he also recently was in uh, Gotham, right? Yeah, he was in. He was in Gotham. He played Penguin's father. Right. Yeah. So which was a perfect fit. For oh the my character. Yeah, too. absolutely. And he and and um the actor that played uh, Penguin, you know, he totally looks like. Uh, they could be father and son. Yeah. But I remember when, you know, I went to go see Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie in the theater, not knowing that he was in it. And he came on. You're like, I think that's Pee Wee Herman, you know, so it was oh, it, so it's always been nice to kind of see him pop up, um, right. you know, in other things. So, yeah, always, cool. always have been a fan. So. So let's talk about San Diego Comic Con and how it's. Yeah, gonna- let's book our. Bring us back to tickets the to the living room. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, San Diego Comic Con will hold two events this year, one virtual and one in person. So San Diego Comic Con began in the 1970s as a comic book convention, but the event has exploded in recent years to become one of the most anticipated pop culture events of the year. It's definitely been on our bucket list um, for for years now. Uh, so the convention typically draws 130,000 attendees to San Diego who are eager to find out the latest news about their favorite franchises. Last year, though, for the 50th anniversary, San Diego Comic Con was held online due to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, So San Diego Comic Con was just one of the many festivals in 2020 that was hit with cancellation. The pandemic continues, obviously, to affect the entertainment industry as theaters remain mostly closed and film and television productions have to follow strict safety protocols to stay safe. So as vaccines are continuing to roll out across the country, many are trying to gauge when it'll be safe to do events like Comic-Con again. Unfortunately, this summer might be too soon. So San Diego had announced that the convention would go virtual again this year. The three-day event will be held online from July 23rd through the 25th. Um, but to make up for this turn of events, though, they are putting on an in-person convention sometime in November when it may be safer to gather. Uh, they haven't really provided any details yet about the November event, but they say that information about the dates, badge prices and other information will be announced as they know more. So there is some hope out there for conventions this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was another convention that was recently rescheduled in our area, wasn't there? Uh, ZoloCon. Right. ZoloCon normally happens in February, um, and they have it listed as July right now. So, But that could bump? That could bump. I could totally see them doing time tickets and, you know, you have to buy your ticket in advance, not at the door, right. you know, type thing. Um you know, like some of these other events that they've been doing uh, that have started to kind of pop up. So I could I could see them doing that again with Zolacon. It's it's a very cramped area. So, I you know, unless you're limiting the amount of uh, vendors to kind of space the vendors out. Right, Because they have multiple rooms that they do. It, right. Uh, they have multiple rooms. At the Fuge. Right. So you have the one, you know, circular room where I guess maybe if you only did like, I think they always had like there's, two. There's an outer ring. And an, an inner. inner ring. And then a, a, a radial ring. Right. So maybe do only, you know, an, an outer, outer and an inner. inner. Yeah. Um, and then for some of the other rooms that they kind of pack people in a little bit more, maybe do half capacity. Yeah. You there. Could, you could so do it. You could do it safely. You could do it smartly. You and I, by that point, will have both of our, our uh, vaccine. vaccine shots. So we'll be fully vaccinated. Um, but, you know, even if we go, we'll still be wearing masks. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, the, there's no – just because we're vaccinated doesn't mean we don't want to protect ourselves from, you know, possibly passing it on to, to somebody else right. or, you know, getting it. So, yeah, I, I see us wearing masks 
you know, for for quite a while. Um, but it'll be nice if some of these events kind of, you know, yeah. And, pop and up. what what San Diego Comic Con's doing is actually kind of unique that they're they are splitting it in the two events, mm-hmm. um, and they're scheduling their live event further out. Right. Um, I, I think it's one of those things that you know. People need a little bit of hope right now. Right. You you need to kind of, you know, like, hey, if ZoloCon is up and running by then or even, um, you know, the the other convention uh, location in our area uh, in Oaks. Right. That's a very that's, huge. that's a yeah. large area. And that even when we've gone to RetroCon. Well, the one that we did do was the the Lego one. That was very well spaced out. Right. The Lego one was very well spaced out. Even the, the what was it, the Greater Philadelphia Comic Con, yeah. uh, that was very well spaced out. So, you know, in a lot of these cases, you know, depending on the venue, they could definitely get away with doing, you know, again, you have to buy your ticket online so that this way they can, you know, manage yeah. how many people are coming, do time tickets, you know, so that you don't have everybody coming, you know, coming in at once. Um, you know, in most of the Comic Cons, you have people that don't stay all day, you know, anyway. Um, so I think the ones that are, are the bigger draw, like the San Diego, like New York, you know, could, uh, New York, that's going to be a while until I think they're yeah, able to New do York that. New York is too packed because under it's, ideal circumstances. Right, exactly. So, th- you know, some of the locations that, you know, that we've gone to could totally be done, uh, you know, in this environment, you know, yeah. in, you know, maybe so by the end of the year. So good news. Good We're news. moving yeah. in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And, and hopefully the light at the end of the tunnel is not too far off. Yeah, far. Absolutely. Uh, So we'll be back after a quick break, and we'll get into our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick is uh, on uh, a um, 10-part series on uh, Netflix called Ginny and Georgia. Um, It's a dramedy, uh, I guess is how they described it. So it follows free-spirited Georgia and her two kids, Ginny and Austin, how they move to the north in search of a fresh start, but find that the road to a new beginning can be bumpy. Um, the, the story centers around Ginny, who is a 15-year-old uh, high school uh, student, and her mom, uh, Ginny, uh, Georgia, who's 30, but yet Ginny is a little bit more mature than her mom. Um, and it, uh, it shows how they kind of are trying to plant their roots in a small New England town. And you find out that, you know, um, uh, Georgia's gone through <laughs> a lot in her, her 30 years. Um, and that, you know, some of her past is kind of starting to catch up with her and that, you know, everything isn't as peachy as, as you would, you know, think. Um, it's, it's not your typical teen drama. It's, it's definitely, you know, where, uh, the last time we did an insightful pick, um, you know, that was much more of a, a teen, uh, you know, um, rom-com type thing where this kind of has aspects of it, but it's, it's darker, uh, as well. Um, the other thing is um they show and 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 talk about um you know how how teens you know sometimes do the self harm um and they actually have at the end of some of the episodes if you or someone you know you know needs to talk to somebody please call um this number so that was kind of um nice to see that they they put that out there and that it's not, you know, all hunky dory and life isn't all peachy keen. Um, you know, so you have these dark, you know, things, um, uh, that, that kind of come in. So, um, you know, not meant for kids, even though, again, the one character, uh, is based, you know, in high school. Um, but definitely along the lines of the Firefly Lane and, uh, virgin river and and that type of you know uh uh 
entertainment. So, if, you know, if those are the types of shows that you like, this would be one that you'd be interested in. Okay, good pick. Thank you. So my pick this week, uh, I jumped on this one as quickly as I could before you could steal it from me. <laughs> uh, it's only got one episode out so far, and it's it's fresh off the presses as of Friday, and that's mm-hmm. Marvel Studios Assembled on Disney+. Plus. Assembled is a comprehensive series of documentary-style specials streaming on Disney+, Plus that chronicles the creation of Marvel Studios' thrilling new shows and theatrical releases. Journey behind the scenes of productions such as WandaVision, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Loki via exclusive on-set footage. Join filmmakers and stars like Scarlett Johansson and Jeremy Renner as they deal with uh, as they detail the genesis of the Black Widow film and the Hawkeye series. Assembled is an immersive and in-depth examination of the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. One of the things that I do enjoy about the new shows that Disney is doing, both the Star Wars and the Marvel shows, is that when they shoot the shows, they shoot the shows and the documentaries at the same time. Yes. So you're getting the interviews, you're getting the the behind-the-scenes stuff, so they already know they're making the documentary, so they're not going back and scrubbing through footage. Right, or having to try and remember, oh, what did we, I can't remember, that was so far ago. Right, so they're doing a very good job of producing the material for the Mm -hmm. um for the documentary, and as soon as WandaVision finished, the documentary landed the following Friday, and it was a great look. It's, I mean, you're watching them interviewed on the sets that you saw on TV mm-hmm. in the shows, so it gives you a very in the moment sense yes. of realism, mm-hmm. you know, in the documentary itself, yeah. and you see the behind the scenes stuff. One of the things that we noticed on the the WandaVision one was just how much wire work they mm-hmm. were doing. You know? Yeah. You would have thought, given the the level of technology they have in post-production, that you wouldn't have your premier primetime actors dangling from an right. apparatus in the ceiling. Right. But they are. They're not mm-hmm. stunt doubles. They're the actual actors, and it lends such a level of realism mm-hmm. to the show. Yeah. Um, and just hearing the, the the personalities and the camaraderie on the set and everything, it's – it, it it makes you feel like you're part of the experience mm-hmm. more than anything. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to the additional episodes that they're going to have in this series. They didn't say how many episodes they're going to have total in the series, but I think that's going to depend entirely on how many more episodes, uh, how many more shows they come out with. Right, and and obviously to for for them, they're not releasing an episode until the whole series has right. has dropped so that which is good because there's so many spoilers there's so that many are in spo- the documentary. Yeah, so if you haven't watched WandaVision, don't right. watch this yet because it's going to ruin, you know, everything. But it it was it, you know, again, we know how much detail they put into all of their projects, but to see, you know, and hear how much detail went into just one episode yeah. um, of, of WandaVision to, you know, to the fact that, you know, the special effects artist happened to work, you know, he interned on Bewitched and, you know. And they did practical and effects. They, did they were pra- wire effects. They weren't computer generated. Right. And that's what they did was that, you know, for each decade of, you know, the show, they went with the whole mentality of, okay, we're filming this as if we were in the 50s, the right. 60s, the they 70s. Did the, they you brought know. in the traditional lighting to get right. the correct lighting effects. Right. Even your studio audience is actually dressed in period they, clothes. That, I thought, like, and that was something that you would have never known from watching the show. Right. And even the audience, the the chairs, the chairs, right. the railings, <laughs> everything was done to, to period standards. Yeah, yeah. Like, who does like that? That, for... level, that level of detail is just insane. Right. And for something that isn't going to show up, in the show. Right. And it's one episode. And it was just one episode that they, that they did, did that, that for. So, so very cool. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Marvel Studios Assembled, streaming now on Disney+. Plus. So I think that's all we had this week. I think so. Before we go, uh, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get video versions of the podcast if you subscribe to Insights into Things. That gets all of our shows on the network. 
For audio versions of this show, you can subscribe to Insights in Entertainment. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Stitcher, pretty much any place you can get a podcast. We would also invite folks to reach out to us, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Oh, That's I'm sorry. <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at insights into things. Uh, the audio versions of all of our podcasts are at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can catch high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And finally, if you don't remember any of our links and you just want to head to our main website, that would be www.insightsintothings.com. That's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.